Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. I know I give Thrones of Britannia a lot of flack for some of its flaws and lack of depth as a vanilla Total War game, but it does have some pretty stellar mods. While Shield Wall of course is arguably the most popular and promising so far for most players, adding some much needed replayability, the mod I'll be showcasing today is 100% the Thrones DLC that CA never released, but that the game and players definitely definitely deserved. I am of course talking about Conquest 1066, a mod that overhauls Thrones of Britannia into a completely new time period with new factions, some new units, and some slightly tweaked mechanics, all set during one of my favorite conflicts in history. In this video, we'll be diving into all the reasons why it's a must-try mod for Thrones of Britannia, and hopefully, by the end, you'll be convinced to check it out as well. Before we get started though, today's video is kindly sponsored by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is a super intuitive service used by millions of people around the world. It not only protects your data with the best software currently available, it optimizes online gaming speeds by reducing lag and ping, it gives you access to new geolocations to play games that might be locally restricted, and much, much more. And for me, Atlas VPN is all of that and it's well reviewed, which is a major plus in my books. And right now you can steal the ultimate Black Friday deal to get Atlas VPN premium for just $170 per month with six months extra. And if you don't like it, it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So go to get.atlasvpn.com slash the Terminator to get an exclusive discount of $170 per month and six months extra. And by using this link, you will be directly supporting the channel as well. So thank you. Now let's get started. Created by prominent Total War content creator Cody Bonds, Conquest 1066, as the name suggests, is set during the Norman invasion of England, with William the Conqueror having just landed in the southeastern tip of the island in Pevensey. Alongside this brilliant faction, 1066 comes with nine other playables, including the English with Mercia and Wessex, the Britons with Cumbria and Gwynedd, the Gales with early Scotland and Moumain, which I think is early Munster, as well as the Vikings. King invaders, which at this point are pretty much settled kingdoms with Northumberland, Nordriar, and Sudriar. For me, the biggest, most interesting change in this mod is that while in Thrones you have dozens and dozens of smaller tribes that fight against each other to eventually become large kingdoms, pretty much like any other Total War, 1066 already has some pretty powerful kingdoms, and not only that, but it comes with some famous names as well. As William, for example, the leader of the Norman invasion, you have an amazing opportunity to reenact history having just landed on the shores of Britain with not only a powerful army, but enough supplies for 25 turns of war. Together with traits and specializations that give things like 200% income to raiding and pillaging, 25% charge bonus to your already powerful cavalry, you will pretty much be unstoppable and have an amazing campaign to become the King of England and earn the name Conqueror. Much in the same vein and with similar ambitions, you also have Harald Hadrada, the King of Norway, who definitely has his eyes set on the throne of England. With a reputation of being the most feared man in Europe, with a number of vassals already in your pocket, and a decent enough Viking army and navy at your disposal, this is a campaign that would also prove to be an interesting attempt at becoming the true conqueror of the island. So what 1066 in essence achieves here is a far more focused and historically authentic enjoyable campaign compared to Vanilla Thrones. With William the Conqueror, Harald Hadrada, or even Harold Godwinson of Wessex, or Tordil Back O'Brain of Munster, you can play campaigns to reenact history as they unfolded in their own unique and challenging set of circumstances. You can, of course, do your own thing, sandbox style, but it's this brilliant groundwork I'm talking about that has been laid out for you to follow down the path of history that I greatly appreciate here. Each faction comes with two unique units, which is also really cool. So for example, as Wessex, you get access to the Thingman Husgarls, or the Elderman Infantry. As the Normans, you get heavy cavalry with the Baron Mounted Skirmishers and Norman Knights. Or as Munster, you get the Hounds of Cullen War Dogs and Clithari Swordsmen, which is a really nice touch. With all factions having access to units like these, you get a slightly fuller and more fleshed out unit roster that brings it all to life in the battlefield. All of these new units 
units, as well as some others, have also gotten some support from other brilliant mods as well. So with permissions to use assets from the guys over at Shield Wall, and their other quality of life mods like immersive shields and armies, as well as some assets from Attila's medieval mod 1212 AD, so you can expect a lot of upscaled and beautiful looking battles between some very visually appealing and historically authentic armies. From a campaign mechanic perspective, the only major change to mention here that does have a pretty massive impact actually, a much bigger impact than I anticipated, is the two turns per month progression system. Because the Norman invasion of Britain took place over a single year, the modders decided to limit as much of the campaign as possible to within that period of time, which makes sense on paper, but drastically impacts things like family growth management, army movement points, and other aspects of the campaign. For the most part, I'm okay with it, I think it works, but it is something to get used to, especially with with long months of British winter. Aside from that, the changes to factions, their traits, starting positions, diplomatic circumstances, and army compositions, there's not a lot else that changes from a campaign perspective. The underlying systems and mechanics of Thrones is mostly all still there, which again, reinforces the fact that this is not meant to be anything like Shield Wall or a full-on overhaul mod. It doesn't do that to the game's core at all. What it's meant to do is give you a new time period that is decently replayable and just as if not more fun than the base game campaign. Finally, just to spotlight the battles of this mod for a moment, it's important to note and appreciate the work that's gone into making all of these units look even better than vanilla to truly depict this turbulent time in the history of the British Isles and make what are already some of the best historical battles in the series better than ever. Overall, Conquest 1066 is definitely one of the best mods you can play on Thrones of Britannia and is a DLC-worthy campaign, with a superb variety of challenging and engaging factions, great use of visual graphical overhauls to units that bring the battles to life, and all in all, a campaign that sticks close to vanilla while focusing the gameplay on Thrones to a time period that I think any fan would greatly enjoy. And a big shout out to Cody Bonds for this brilliant mod, I think you've done an amazing Amazing job. If you like what you see, Conquest 1066 is available on the Steam Workshop for Thrones, and I've linked the page in the video description and the pinned comment below, so definitely get in there and check it all out for yourself. I've also linked Cody's Discord if you have any questions, having issues running the mod, or bugs that you want to bring to the attention of the modders. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please do leave a like and let me know your thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you think about everything we've discussed here today, and of course, what you think of Conquest 1066. Don't forget to subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay, and news, and thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.